game, I want to give shout outs to some of our winners. Congrats to Laura from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and Catherine from Washington, D.C., and Andrew O. Andrew from Rockville, Maryland. He won the full prize all by himself in week one. Well done by all of you. I cannot wait to see who wins and joins that list next. It's going to happen tonight. On tonight's episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on ABC, Catherine O'Hara, who I love so much, and Dr. Phil, they played great games and $250,000 was won for charity. Now you, yes, you out there are about to play for that same amount of money. As always, here's how it works. I'll ask up to 15 questions that yes, get harder as we go up the ladder. You'll have three lifelines to help you, but you can only use one per question. There's 50-50, where the app removes two of the wrong choices, double dip, where you get to choose two potential answers instead of just one, and go with the audience, where your answer automatically locks in with the most popular answer choice. Listen, you'll only have 12 seconds, 12 seconds from the start of each question to lock in your answer, even when choosing a lifeline. So keep that in mind and move quick. After 15 questions, we go on to the battle royale. That's where the heat goes up a little bit. I get a little more nervous for you, but you're gonna nail it. Here's what happens. I'll ask you another five questions, but this time you won't be able to use your lifelines. Don't worry, if you miss a question along the way, you can keep playing along for fun even if you can't win any cash. And if at any point you all mess up and get out all at once, we'll give the remaining players from the last question one more chance to get one right. And finally, if we ever get down to just one player, we'll end the game and declare them the winner right then and there. Make sense to everybody? We excited? $250,000 tonight. Let's play Millionaire Live. Here's your first question. Question one. The company that makes Q-tip says what part of the name stands for quality? The Q, the P, the S, the hyphen. I mean, they're pretty much the perfect tool. I use them to clean hard to reach dirt like on my keyboard, which is so satisfying. You know what I'm talking about. You can delint your hair dryer or fix your lip liner. You can clear out the charging port on your cell phone. They can even help win you $250,000. They should put that on the box if you ask me. Okay, you're locked in. We're gonna start this game right now. <sighs> the part of the name that stands for quality is the Q. We're one question in, people. This is just the Q-tip of the iceberg, if you will. Oh, and here's a quick PSA. Remember to turn on your notifications on your phone. You don't want to miss a game and update any of the action. So flip that notification switch to on. You didn't miss much this week. You're here with me. You are here to win a quarter million. Let's do it. Moving on to question two. What animal has black skin under its black and white striped fur? Lion, zebra, giraffe, rhino. Are there any new players out here tonight? Welcome, you brave souls. I love a first time player. So full of hope and lifelines, so innocent. I mean, you don't know what it feels like to lose 250K on question 19 just because you don't know squat about 2018's most popular names for boys. Some of our OG players playing right now, yeah, they know the heartbreak of which I speak. Not today, everybody. Positive vibes only. We are getting that money. I'm not lying. Or giraffing or rhinoing. <laughs> Nope, the answer is zebra. Ooh, yes, you are earning those millionaire live stripes right now. Such a fun game, so much money on the line. By the way, anybody else craving fruit stripes gum right now? I loved that stuff growing up at least for those first 30 seconds when it actually had any flavor. If you feel me, tweet me, at Millionaire Live, or Millionaire TV, rather. Anyway, two down, let's go. Here is Question three. A college student's main field of specialization is called what? Major, Admiral, Sergeant, Colonel. Oh, what did you specialize in, Kay? Oh, that would be procrastination in college, if you out there were wondering. Not terrible, by the way. Look where I ended up today. Consecutive nights of frozen pizza for dinner and breakfast. Neighbors who refuse to keep it down. I mean, I'm purchasing copious amounts of cheap alcohol weekly. I basically hopped in the DeLorean and gone back to my college years. I even have a zit 
you probably can't see because there's lots of makeup on it. Zit too, really fun. Okay, looks like we're ready. A college student doesn't usually have a colonel or an admiral. They have a major. Ooh, 250K is pretty major too, guys. Uh, that's a major dent on your debt, on your mortgage, or you could buy like 30,000 frozen pizzas, 12,000 kegs of beer. Carry the one, I think. Okay, focus, big money. Next up, question four. The 49ers Katie Sowers is the first openly gay coach in what sports league? NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL. Last week, I threw out a pregame question to the Twitterverse. I asked which celeb you would bring as your expert if you were on the show. I got some interesting responses, to say the least. A lot of you picked Tom Hanks, which is great. A lot of you said Gene Simmons. So am I missing something there? Please tweet us at Millionaire TV. Thanks, everybody, who did tweet. It was awesome. My favorite one came from at Sean Jones 302. He wrote, Def Snoop Dogg. I feel like he secretly knows everything. Plus, we could be sipping on gin and juice on our journey to the mill. I feel like, yeah, I can't argue with that logic. But I will say the person this question is about would be a great choice too, Katie Sowers. I know her personally, she's awesome. She's not known though for hoops or power plays. She doesn't coach baseball, no. This absolute badass coaches in the NFL. Fun fact, I once helped orchestrate a sweet little meetup moment between Katie and her idol Demi Lovato before the Super Bowl. Yes, the Niners lost, but it wasn't the worst day ever. Not for Katie, not for Demi. That was a cringy name drop, I know, it's okay. Just shake it off, guys. Feeling good? Let's move on to question five. The warning, you may get wet, is seen at what aptly named Disneyland log ride? Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Matterhorn. Grab yourself an imaginary churro and don't forget to pool your resources soon, people. Those lifelines, they are, they're a wonderful thing. They really are and they go away, so use them soon. If you're a fan of the happiest place on earth and why wouldn't you be, you know that you may get wet isn't a warning for Space Mountain or Big Thunder Mountain. No, the correct answer is Splash Mountain. It was originally going to be called Zippity River Run and has that gnarly plunge at the end. It's a 52 and a half foot drop. And then they take your picture in the middle of it, mid dive and they post it afterwards for the entire world to see. Yeah, did you hate that? Huh, now you know how it feels when you take screenshots of me and post them on Twitter when I look like this. Mid question. Thanks guys. At Millionaire Line, my secret. Okay. Let's flash on over to Question six. Dax Shepard has expressed interest in portraying what star of Tiger King? John Eccentric, Jim Erratic, Joe Exotic, Jack Ecstatic. Sad thing is y'all, another star is already set to play the lead. That's right, the great Nicolas Cage. Now at least we know he can pull off that hairstyle. Remember Con Air, that dusty mullet in the wind? That, my friends, was a look. Cyrus the Virus, Malkovich, I know, I haven't seen any Harry Potter movie, but I've seen Con Air like 97 times. I'm a complicated woman, get over it. Uh, you might have met a John Eccentric in an overpriced coffee shop or found a Jack Ecstatic on Tinder, but the answer here is Joe Exotic. Dak Shepard would be awesome. I actually think his wife, Kristen Bell, would do a mean Joe Exotic. I'd like to see her in that role. Who would be Carol Baskin? My vote? Chloe Feynman, SNL, she's tops, but I'm no casting director. I'm just a dancing game show host trying to win you 250K, so let's shake it over to question seven. What did Slate call the app where Gen Z vies for 15 seconds of fame? TikTok, Twitch, Imager, Reddit. I mean, what's 15 seconds of fame when you can have $250,000? You can Scrooge McDuck coin dive on all social media platforms. You could go reverse Moira and Johnny Rose right here tonight. Shout out Catherine O'Hara. Such a good show. I miss it so much, by the way. Uh, oh, you guys are locked in. You're ready to go. Shut up, Kay. We want our money. Well, Slate opened the article mentioning a classic Kesha hit with the same name as this app, which is... TikTok. On the clock. Oh, I'm gonna get sued. Don't sue me. Don't. Don't sue me here. All right. 
I know TikTok, I'm not on it, of course. Uh, there is no hitting the woe happening here. Just plain old Twitter for me, at Millionaire TV, at Hey K Adams. <sighs> Seven down. Moving on to question eight. From 1979 to 1999, Pluto was closer to the sun than what ice giant? Uranus, Ceres, Neptune, Jupiter. Do you have a trivia fever and the only cure is more millionaire? Ha, huh, you're in luck. Check this out, you Christopher Watkins. It's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in your app store or Google Play. There are tens of thousands of questions that you can play anywhere, anytime to get you set for real money on next week's show. So. Love that. And let's do this, shall we? Let's land this shuttle. Our solar systems, two ice giants are Uranus and Neptune, but from 1979 to 1999, Pluto was closer to the sun than Neptune. It's the most distant planet from the sun. Did you know it had five rings? That's one fewer than Tom Brady. And here's a pretty spatial fact, if I do say so myself. One of the names of the ring, the fifth one, the coolest and dopest one of all, is named Adams. It's true. Look it up. How we feeling, everybody? $250,000 on the line. It's written in the stars. You're on your way. Next up, question nine. In blackjack, what action always results in a hand of exactly three cards? Surrender, split, double down, insurance. An early written depiction of blackjack is found in a short story by the author of Don Quixote way back in the 17th century. So it's been around for a while from that to Rain Man to Swingers. It is the most widely played casino card game and a perfect place to cop a free watered down cocktail. <sighs> this is getting exciting. We're almost halfway there. Imagine there's 250K on this hand. Hit me. The answer is double down. I think choice A, surrender, by the way, is what you do when the casino security asks you to leave after you down a jungle juice slushy serving one of those yardsticks. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And no, that is not autobiographical. Nope, not even a little bit. Here is question 10. Who is seen upside down on the cover of her two most recent studio albums? Selena Gomez, Ariana Grande, Adele, Demi Lovato. Hey, we are officially halfway through the game. I think that means it's time for some millionaire fast facts. Okay, let's go. From the $2,000 question onward, the music for each question rises by a semitone to increase the tension. Oh, that's how you do it. According to the crew, the phrase contestants say most often is, this looks like a smart audience. I mean, that's true. I think I feel like I heard that every week back in the day. The set includes over a mile, a mile of LED tape for all of the detailed set lighting. So if you ever want to throw a rave, hit up the millionaire people. They will hook you up with the lights. Okay, back to our question. Which of these pop stars can be seen upside down on her last two studio albums? The answer is Ariana Grande. Are you in? Did you get it right? Remember, and only because I love you so much, there are lifelines. You had three when you started this game. They go away after the classic 15 questions. So use them while you can. After this, they're as useless as an accordion player in the movie A Quiet Place. It would not end well. Use those lifelines. Let's move on to question 11. The Sesame Street painting, The Persistence of Cookies, is a parody of whose artwork? Salvador Dali? Andy Warhol, Vincent van Gogh, Frida Kahlo. Can we quickly note how clever Sesame Street is with all of their parodies? Have you seen Orange is the New Snack? It's a good lesson, by the way, for Cookie Monster. He needs a little bit more fruits and veggies in that diet. The show is like 50 years old. That is a lot of processed carbs. <sighs> We're ready. The parody in question is The Persistence of Cookies. It's a spoof of the melting watches of Salvador Dali. Hope you got that one right. If you didn't, keep hanging out with us, though. Don't forget, next week, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is back Thursday at 8 p.m. And Millionaire Live, us, starts at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. 250K on the line. Let's get down to our number and letter of the day. Next question.
Here is question 12. A recent Google Doodle honored Ignaz Semmelweis and what act he promoted? Jogging, veganism, hand washing, gardening. Can we just stop and talk about Catherine O'Hara for a moment? She was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire playing for her charity tonight, Upward Bound House. I am obsessed with her. I watched every second of that. I can still picture her belting out, Neo! at the dinner table. She's brilliant. Remember when she was hitching a ride with the Polka King, the late John Candy in Home Alone? What a legend. Okay, enough about Catherine O'Hara because I could go on all night, but the app is ready for you. The recent Google Doodle honoring the father of infection control, Ignaz Zemmelweis, was promoting hand washing. That's right, you scrub for 20 seconds, you sing a little happy birthday in your head. If you're me, you switch it up and sometimes sing the chorus to Harry Belafonte, Shake, 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 Senora. That's what I do. What do you sing? At Millionaire TV with your answer. Next up, question 13. A pina colada scent for ukuleles is one of the few smells that have been what? Banned, in space, sold at auction, trademarked. Okay, so I talk about a ukulele that I bought a lot here on the show and the writers asked me if I would play it during this game right now. The thing is I can't. It's either missing or I may have conveniently misplaced it and just left it somewhere else. I'm not saying I don't know how to play anything on it yet, but I'm also not not saying that I don't know how to play anything. Sorry. Uh, I think I do know that no pina colada scented ukuleles have been to space or have been banned, but the Eddie Finn Ukulele Company has had them trademarked. <laughs> okay, I feel bad. I promise. Should I promise? Okay, I promise I will play something next week and I'll let you know if it smells like pina coladas. Unlikely since I haven't taken it out of the box and it costs like $35 online. So. Stay tuned for next week. Tweet me song requests at Millionaire TV. Moving on to <laughs> question 14. Three signers of the U.S. Declaration of Independence share which of these names? Charles, Benjamin, Roger, Stephen. So 56 delegates eventually signed the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Can you hear my, my neighbor right now? Uh, neighbor, audience, audience, loud salsa dancing neighbor. She's officially part of the show. She doesn't know we're doing the show over here, of course, but it feels like she's in a Rage Against the Machine cover band, the way that this wall is moving from this noise. I apologize. You don't care though. You're focused and you want to know about these names. Well, there was one Charles, one Roger, but Franklin, Rush, and Harrison were all Benjamin. That's right, Puff Daddy and Biggie and Lil' Kim, they knew what was up. Me too, I love Benjamins, Brat, specifically. Uh, I also love you. This is why I'm standing here reminding you that those lifelines go bye-bye after this question. So use them or lose them, kiddos. Here is question 15. An abstract sculpture of a dancer inspired the shape of what landmark? London Eye, Guggenheim, New York, Space Needle, Sydney Opera House. I bet these are some of the things that you wish you had learned instead of memorizing all the words and the dance moves to Savage, like my neighbor was probably doing last night in the middle of the night, no big deal. Uh, let's, let's just stamp our imaginary passports and head on over across the pond for a quick sec. The London Eye is basically a Ferris wheel. If we fly to Australia, the architect of the Sydney Opera House was inspired by cut up citrus fruit, but the landmark inspired by an abstract sculpture of a dancer is Space Needle. How are we feeling out there, everybody? Thriving 250K on the line. Ah, that, is, that is just life changing money. I'm so happy you guys are here, whether you're winning or losing. This is so, so much fun and a highlight of my social distancing 2020. So thank you. Okay, it's about to get serious right now. Questions are harder and there's no lifelines. It's time for the battle Royale. Congratulations if you made it through the classic Millionaire 15. We are taking it up a notch. There's five more questions, which means you're five more questions away from 250K. You're on your own right now. Let's do this and keep playing Millionaire Live. 
Here is question 16. The cast of Avengers Endgame does not include which of these? Maria Shriver's son-in-law, Barbara Streisand's stepson, Taryn Killam's wife, Billy D. Williams' niece. Uh, I noticed Captain America is now on the gram. At Chris Evans should probably follow at Millionaire TV. He doesn't follow anybody. He should also use the hashtag who wants to be a millionaire. You guys can do that too and show me your, your game face or your end game face, if you will. Your answers are locked in. I know it's high stress, high money, high reward. All right, let's uh, Thanos this. Ready? Here we go. Taryn Killam's wife is Kobe Smolders, who plays Agent Maria Hill. Maria Shriver's daughter, Katherine Schwarzenegger, is married to Chris Pat Pratt, who plays Star-Lord slash Peter Quill. The correct answer is Billy D. Williams' niece. A lot of family connection there. Well, Barbara Streisand's stepson is Josh Berland. I didn't know this, that he is her stepson, and he, of course, plays Thanos. Okay. Yes, I've seen Avengers, so that should earn me some points with you trivia people out there. Are we ready? Next up, question 17. Which of these is a default virtual background image in the video conferencing app Zoom? Niagara Falls, Golden Gate Bridge, Grand Canyon, Everglades. That's right, people. Even our backgrounds have to have filters now. I don't know how I feel about this. My fave part of any chat with a crush is what's going on in that background. Like, is that an overflowing pile of dishes in the sink? Is that a framed photo of you and your girlfriend on your mantle there? Is that a pet snake? Okay, bye. Peace. Deuces. See ya later. Zoom took that sort of investigative reporting away. <sighs> 250K, guys. Get excited. If you guessed Niagara, you can change your background to the crying Jordan meme. You got it wrong, but you should stay and play anyway. Uh, I hope you don't Thelma and Louise it into the Grand Canyon after finding out that that also was the wrong answer. The answer we're looking for is Golden Gate Bridge. If you got that one right, you are zooming towards the final question. We are so close. Time to bridge the gap between you and that 250K. Here is question 18. Which of these cities was once a national capital? Rio de Janeiro, Vancouver, Sydney, Boston. Don't forget, next week, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is back Thursday at 8 p.m. Millionaire Live starts at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific with me. I feel like we have a standing date by now, don't you? Like, like tonight's our night. Thursdays are the new Friday. So, yeah, there's that, and there's 250K on the line. Just a casual exchange here in the middle of my living room. Let's get to some geography here. Brazil's current capital is Brasilia, but from 1763 to 1960, it was Rio de Janeiro. That's right. Hopefully you got and aced all of those tests on geography back in the day. That was kind of a tough one, especially with no lifelines. And guys, I just realized this. We only have after tonight, three more nights together to win money. So make sure you make the best of it. You guys make my day and my night right here on Millionaire Live. Tweet us at Millionaire TV. Whew, we're almost there, guys. 250K on the line. Time for question 19. Brussels sprouts come from the same family as which of these foods? Swiss chard, radishes, artichokes, parsnips. I just want to give a big Brussels shout to all those players who've already been kicked out of the game. They got one wrong, but you're still here. You're hanging out just for fun. You know, it's not always about the money. It's about the integrity of the game. I respect you. I see you. And thanks for vegging out with us. Let's get back to the question. I, that was good. I had to get that one out there. Uh, Swiss chard is related to spinach. Parsnips are in bed with carrots. But Brussels sprouts come from the same family as... Radishes. We are, oh, we did it. We are one question away from $250,000. I mean, I'm getting all artichoked up over here. Okay, those are side dishes. Those first 19 questions, they're over. It is time for the main course. That's right, baby. Time for the final question. Question 20. In the 1960s, what author created a character named Kay Adams? Mario Puzo, Jacqueline Suzanne, Arthur Haley, Ian Fleming. Writers, you love me! Yes, K. 
Kay Adams is my name. I know you think I probably must know the answer to this question, and maybe I do, but you'll never know unless I wink or something, but winking is mildly creepy, so I will refrain from doing so. I do know that Kay Adams was Michael Corleone's wife in The Godfather. Diane Keaton played her in that movie. It was directed by Francis Ford Coppola, but the author of this legendary novel for $250,000 in my name is Mario Puzo. Did you just get lucky with Kay Adams? Okay, that came out wrong. But hey, you made it, we made it, we all did this together. All 20 questions, someone is about to get a payout they can't refuse, it's calculating. I'm nervous, 250K. Okay, we're ready. Let's see who won. Okay, look at this. We have multiple winners. I love this. So much money. Congratulations, all of you, everyone who just won Millionaire Live. You are all splitting a cut of $250,000. For the rest of you, if you enjoy the game, let us know. Please use the hashtag who wants to be a millionaire. Follow us at Millionaire TV. This is crazy. We will be back next week for an all new chance to win big directly after the next episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on ABC. Turn on the notifications. Let me remind you to do that. You will never miss a game or an update. My name's Kay Adams. We'll see you soon.